Now that I've had the benefit of, of, of seeing all of these records, all of these records. Paul's body and, and Maggie's body. Do you recall getting blood on, on you, on your hands, or any part of you? Yes. Do, do you know what, whose blood you would have gotten on you? I know I got blood on my fingertips. Just your fingertips? Um, except with so much blood. Turns out there was a drop of blood on the steering wheel of the Suburban. Do you know how that got there? Um, I mean, if it was fresh, I put it there. I, I assume it got there from me touching Maggie and then, and then touching the steering wheel that night. Blood on this gun? Maybe not. I mean, did... if Maggie's blood's on that gun, then I, I put it there. I mean, Maggie, I mean, Maggie didn't really fool with guns other than to put them up. Dude, if you were at the kennels and you're driving back from the kennels, then you must have heard it. Especially if you're in a golf cart, not like After in a slept, car collected, with the roof. Uh, roughly, when do you remember Paul getting there and you getting there and starting to ride the property? Uh, now that I've had the benefit of, of, of seeing all of these records. A huge benefit. Now that I see all the contradicting evidence, I'm going to retail my story to make sure it matches with that. Because there's no way to dispute the evidence at this point. <laughs> Um, the details have been that I got home around 642 or 645 or something like that, and Paul got there you know, very quickly thereafter. So you rode the property for a while. Um, do you remember uh, when Maggie arrived? Yeah, it was, uh, it was later than that. It was 8 or after 8. And, and do, you remember, um, do you remember her arriving or where you were when she arrived? I believe that I was at the shop when, when she came through. Maggie went to the house, and I know that. Um, but shortly after, however I learned that Maggie got home, I went to the house when, when Maggie got home, and I left Paul at the shop. Wait, sorry, how far is the shop from the house? Oh, God, I feel like I have to rewind through it. The, the, the shop is where the kennels were located. Saw Mags, talked to Mags. Um, and I took a shower. Um, the, the and now he says I took a shower. Oh, now he conveniently remembers he took a shower and changed his clothes. <laughs> clothes that we saw in that Snapchat video was, uh, is that the clothes you had on, on, at work that day? Yes, that, those are the clothes I had on at work that day. When you got out of the shower um, and changed clothes, what'd you do next? I went back out where Mags and Pawpaw were, and, uh, what were for they dinner. Doing? Mags had fixed mine and her plate because I didn't fix a plate. She may have fixed Pawpaw. Pawpaw was eating, and Pawpaw was almost done eating by the time I got back out. Which and uh, so then Maggie and I ate. And do y'all eat at the table? Do you eat at the den? What, what's your normal habit? Uh, we would do both, but I mean, when we ate at the Man, I don't believe the shower thing. I don't think he took a shower because he said like that Maggie came home, they all ate dinner together, and then they went to the kennels while he took a nap. But like that's his timeline is just not making sense. Because Maggie and Paul were already at the kennels 835 with Alex's voice in the background of this Snapchat. Uh, Maggie wanted to go to the kennels and uh, I had eaten dinner. I laid back on the couch where I was sitting. Uh, Maggie wanted to go to the kennels and she asked me to go. And and I didn't, I didn't go at that time. I didn't want to go. And you had just had a shower. Just had a shower. That you and, conveniently um, just remembered about. And you said that, well, did you go with Maggie to the kennels no. immediately? No, I did not. What did you do? What did she leave? Yes, she did. Do you know how she got to the kennel? At the time, I didn't. But now, looking at these condensed records, um, and, and, and understanding the timeline, it's clear to me that she rode with Papa. I changed my mind and decided I'm going to ride up there. Yeah, because I love my wife. And, and I do did. what she says. And how, how did you get to the, to the kennels? I went on a golf cart. For him to say, like, oh, no, I have a distrust of cops. Like, bullshit. Bullshit. I don't believe that. And then if you had a distrust for cops... Well, why did you continue the lie to your family and friends? And he was like, oh, well, once I lie about something, I'm going to continue the lie. I'm like, dude, Alex, that's not a good stance to take. Because 
it could equally just be applied to this right now. Once you lie about the murders, you're just going to continue to lie until you die, you know, deny till you die. So I, I don't know, man. I don't know if it was really smart for them to really say that. And he was like, yeah, sometimes when you're on opiates, it makes you really um, paranoid and stuff. But it's like, so that paranoia took presence over you trying to help the investigators find who the murderers were. If you really wanted the murderers to be caught, you wouldn't spend your time lying. You want to be as forthcoming, as truthful as possible because you want it to be smooth for the investigators. And when you got down to the kennels, what was happening? Uh, it's just what I thought it was. Um, it, it was a little bit of chaos. I mean, it was clear to me that uh, Max had just let the dogs out. Grady, that's Buster's dog. And the other is the yellow lab. The dogs first were let out. And the chicken coop sort of formed an L shape. Grady, I think, learned this from Bubba. Grady was chasing guineas. It's like a chicken. It's a domestic bird. You know, they just make a lot of racket. Even it I feel like it's also like a self-soothing technique to keep on talking and going on and on before you're about to talk to about something really important. Because that's, it's like I said, it's way too tight. Bubba, Bubba catches the chicken. Bubba didn't chase. These dogs didn't chicken wasn't dead. And that chicken wasn't dead. To take the chicken and you had a hat on his, what we call a tracking collar. It's a tracking collar. Um, so he had on a tracking collar that the chicken sitting on top of the, um, many reason to believe anybody else moved that chicken. And, 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 and another thing, when Bubba had on that collar. I, I'm really confused. Why do we care about this collar thing? I know Bubba had a collar on. Bubba had on a collar. Okay. I assume you take your thumb and you push his gum in, real mouth opens right up. Thank you, Alex. Took the chicken out and put it on. I believe the portable dog kennel. So you're telling me Maggie gets home at 8.17. You were at the shed with Paul. You make your way from the shed to the main house. You take a shower. All three of y'all quickly eat. Maggie and Paul... Head to the kennel first at 8.35, the latest. And then you're telling me you got there shortly after, but at 8.43 is when your voice is heard in that Snapchat video. Also, why, why would he go to the kennels and only stay there for like 10 minutes? The kennel is like 0.2 miles drive. Why would you only stay there for like a couple minutes? 